Hey class, in this recording we're going to be focusing on your brain anatomy. So as so we look at this content, this is going to be from exercise 17 of your lab manual, and we're going to be focusing on the brain and structures of the brain. So let's dive into it. The brain is broken up into four big or main regions. We have the cerebrum, we have the brain stem, the diencephalon, and the cerebellum. Those four main regions are then going to have subregions, or excuse me, we'll have substructures associated with them. And then there's going to be these specific substructures or lobes or, you know, indentations or deep indentations, these other structures that we'll focus on. So we'll go down the list in detail. First, let's talk about the cerebrum. Here in Visible Body, I have our digital cadaver pulled up. I'm going to go ahead and remove our connective structures. I'll remove the bones. And when it comes to the nervous system, I'm going to go ahead and click on the peripheral nervous system here. And just scroll up and click peripheral. And now hide the peripheral nervous system. And let's get rid of all meninges as well. There we go. Now we have just the central nervous system, nice and cleaned up for us. So we're looking at this structure. We have this big wrinkly part of the brain that this is going to be highlighted right now, Teal. This is the cerebrum. Um, let's go ahead and highlight both parts of the, both lobes of the cerebrum. There's a left and a right lobe of the cerebrum. So that's one of the main regions of the brain. Uh, the next main region of the brain that we're going to cover is the brain stem. And as we look at the brain stem, there's some debate, uh, well, I should say some minor disagreements in um, A&P texts on how the brain stem is sliced and diced. I'm going to go ahead and hide the cerebrum to better expose the structures down in. When we talk about the brain stem, we're going to focus on the medulla oblongata, the pons, and the midbrain all being combined together. So here we have the midbrain highlighted. This is the most superior region of the brainstem. Here we have the pond, meta, oh, oh, nope, I did not want to select that one. Here we have the pons selected. Let's do multi-select here. So the pons is another region of the brainstem. And then the final region of the brainstem is the medulla oblongata, which is down here, the most inferior portion of the brainstem. So if I go back up here to the top and, and reselect these parts of our brainstem, there we go. Now I've selected all the parts of the midbrain. So here we can see the entire brain stem's highlight, at least how the brain stem is defined within your lab manual. Another main region is the diencephalon. And the diencephalon has some substructures associated with it, the uh, or subregions. We have the hypothalamus, the thalamus, and the thalamus associated with the di that make up the diencephalon. So as we look at the hypothalamus and the thalamus, we have the hypothalamus right here. I can just go ahead and thankfully just select the entire diencephalon. And this, the way visible body here slices and dices the diencephalon, excludes the thalamus as well. So I'm going to add our thalamus. Let's go ahead and clean this up a bit. We'll get rid of the bitumen. There we go. He had to do some digging. So there's our thalamus. So we have our thalamus combined with the hypothalamus. And this is how your lab, these structures combined in your lab manual are defined as the forebrain, are those regions. And there's also some other structures as well that we want to add to that. We have the pituitary gland, the mammillary body, and then these other structures as well. So we can go ahead and 
add the pituitary gland. The pineal body is posterior over here, left right pineal gland. And optic chiasm is right here on the anterior. So all of these combined, all these structures combined here, make up what we define as the diencephalon according to your lab manual. So those are the main regions. Let's go back ahead and refresh this view uh, just to get back to our default view. And we'll go ahead and hide the peripheral nervous system again. And we'll also hide all of the meninges again as well. And we'll also get rid of the spinal cord. So now we're left with our disembodied brain. So let's go through this in more detail. First, uh, with the cerebrum, the cerebrum's broken up into two cerebral hemispheres. We have the left and right cerebral hemispheres. Remember, we always have a patient-centered point of view. So while we're looking at this view. The left cerebral hemisphere is right here. And then the right cerebral hemisphere will be on the other side. Right over here. As we look at the fissures, gyri, gyrus, and sulcus, that are the, excuse me, the fissure, gyrus, and sulcus that we have, uh, to differentiate these from each other, I want you to write in your notes that a fissure is a deep indentation, a sulcus is a shallow indentation, and a gyrus is a ridge. So in between the left and right cerebral hemispheres, we have this really deep ridge. I'll go ahead and highlight it here. I'll annotate it in green and pull that up. That really deep indentation is the longitudinal fissure. And then as we look at our brain, you can see how there are shallow ridges, uh, the, excuse me, those shallow indentations. I'll go ahead and highlight a shallow indentation right now in green, like that guy right there. That's one that you need to know. That's the central sulcus. And then we also have shallow ridges. The ridges are in between the sulci. So right here is a ridge in red. That is the pre, that's a gyrus. And that particular gyrus directly anterior to the central sulcus is the pre-central gyrus. And then in blue right here, I'll highlight the post-central gyrus. So sulci are shallow indentations. Gyri are shallow ridges, and I just highlighted three key ones from your lab objective list in green, red, and blue. So I forgot to the sulci, or I still have two more sulci left to cover, the parietal occipital and the lateral sulcus. The lateral sulcus, I'll go ahead and highlight in red. It, will, it is right here and we'll separate the temporal lobe from the parietal and frontal lobes. I'll cover the lobes in a second. Another key sulcus that we have is back here. This deep sulcus, I'm highlighting blue, right there. That's going to accept, separate the parietal lobes from the occipital lobes. And as its name, and if we look at its name, it's beautifully named. The name is the parietal occipital sulcus. It's named for the lobes that it separates. Speaking of lobes, let's talk about the lobes of the cerebrum. These lobes of the cerebrum are named for the structures, excuse me, the bone of the cranium, which they are nearby. So if we look in our model here, the frontal lobe is going to be by the frontal bone. So here's our right frontal lobe. The temporal, excuse me, parietal lobe is by the parietal bone. The temporal lobe is by the temporal bone. And then the occipital lobe is going to be, well, you guessed it, where the occipital bone is located. We also have the corpus callosum. As we look at the corpus callosum, this is going to connect the left and right 
cerebral hemispheres. So if, hmm, come on, let me highlight. Apparently it's not letting me highlight just that term, corpus callosum. So in this model, I'll go ahead and just remove the left side of the brain, the left cerebral hemisphere, and I'll just dissect back here. I'm just going to go ahead and keep clicking my way through and work our way down in. We need to get rid of this lateral ventricle. And now we've gotten into the structure we were looking for right down in here, the corpus callosum. So here in visible body, this is what our corpus callosum looks like. And again, it connects the left and right cerebral hemispheres. Move on, moving on, let's go to our next main region, the brainstem. We'll start um, with the most superior portion, the midbrain. While we're looking at the midbrain, I'll go ahead and get rid of the right cerebrum to clean things up for us. Here we can see Let me get rid of the limbic system entirely. There we go. This is nice and cleaned up now. So here we have the midbrain as a whole, and I'm going to the midbrain. It includes that cerebral crux with this structure as well. So this whole area right here, that's a subregion. That's the midbrain, and the midbrain has four bumps associated with it, called the corpora quadrigemina. Quad meaning four. I like to think of the uh, corpora quadrigemina as the baby butts. So if we look back here, we can see there's four primary bumps. I'll go and highlight them right now. Uh, they're broken up into superior and inferior groupings. So we have the inferiors, then we have the superiors, and all four of those combined make the corpora quadrigemina. The next subregion of the brain we're going to focus on is the pons. The pons is the big bulge on the brain stem. To find the pons, I'll just change our view. Oh, let's get rid of multi-select. There we go. So here's the pons. And we're not asking you to know any specific structures for the pons. Just recognize that this large bump is the pons. And then finally, the last portion of the brainstem we're going to focus on, the medulla oblongata. So as we look at our medulla oblongata, this is the most inferior part of the brain. This is the part of the brain that is going to extend down through the foramen magnum uh, to connect to the spinal cord. So this foramen, the medulla oblongata is the most inferior subregion of the brainstem. Our next main region we're going to cover in detail is the diencephalon. And I've already talked about the diencephalon as a whole. Let's talk about the subregions and substructures. So first we have the hypothalamus. Well, we're looking for the hypothalamus. It is going to be relatively easy to find. It is right here as a structure hanging down. And inferior and Hanging down from the hypothalamus, we have the pituitary gland. And our pituitary gland can be broken up into anterior and posterior regions. Uh, right now, I just want you to think of the whole thing as the pituitary gland. And we also have the optic chiasm. As we're looking at this structure, this is where our sense of vision comes to our eyes. So the optic nerves, cranial nerve 2, will connect to the brain at this structure. Uh, we also need to cover the pineal gland and fornix. So while we're looking at the posterior here, that bump right there, directly superior to the corpora quadrigemina, that bump I just highlighted, that is our pineal gland. Now to find the fornix, I'm going to need to dissect back the thalamus 
and its nu associated nuclei. Let's go ahead and get those back there. And we can see this ridge right here. This ridge that's directly inferior to the corpus callosum is going to be the fornix. So right there, that ridge is the fornix. You'll want to refer to your lab manual to see the fornix labeled. Visible body does not have the fornix as a standalone structure, unfortunately. And I also need to cover the mammillary body. The mammillary body is going to be on the anterior Let's go ahead and reset our brain view here. It's just got, I just lost a lot of my context. So let's go ahead and remove the meninges and we can remove our peripheral nervous system as well. Here we go. So now I have all my contacts back And there. Now I can see the, pine the mammillary bodies right there is the one on the right. And here's the left mammillary body. Uh, they're so named because early anatomists thought they resembled a pair of breasts. The mammillary bodies and with the static models that we have in lab are oftentimes mixed up with cranial nerves, just because they're all the cranial nerves and the mammillary bodies on those SOMSO teaching models we have are all colored white. So let's go down the list, check, I've covered those, I've covered the thalamus, I've covered those three structures. All that's left is the major region of the cerebellum, which I have not covered yet, and the arbor vitae, that structure within. So as I'm looking at our brain, down here, uh, towards the back of the brain, let's click on that again, here we go, is our cerebellum. So we have the left cerebellum highlighted right now, and then it obviously has the right cerebellum right next to it. When we look at the cerebellum, it's going to have tiny sulci and tiny gyri associated with it. And I can go ahead and dissect back half of the cerebellum and expose here we go, expose a white branching tree pattern. Visible body doesn't let you select this, but I've included it on your list because it's so cool looking. So if we look at this branching pattern of white matter within the brain, that branching pattern is referred to as the arbor vitae within the cerebellum. I am going to skip the meninges of the brain, menix plural. Um, those are relatively straightforward and visible body also does not do a good job of highlighting them. And I'll move on to Roman numeral number three, the cerebral spinal fluid circulation. We'll focus on ventricles or hollow spaces in the brain and then the pet tubes that fluid will flow through. So with here with invisible body, let's go ahead and get rid of the left cerebrum just to really expose and highlight those circulatory structures. So right here, this structure that I have highlighted, come on, there we go, is our left lateral ventricle. And it's so nice to see this with invisible body. It does such a good job of showing what it looks like compared to the static teaching models. Cerebral spinal fluid, it will flow from the left ventricle. Hmm. Uh, let me get rid of this guy right here as well. We'll get rid of the right cerebrum. And we'll get rid of the limbic system. We'll just clean it up a bit. There we go. This is a much tighter looking model right now. So here we can see how we have the right ventricle and the left ventricle. And then those small ventricles will have a teeny tiny tube called an interventricular foramen. That interventricular foramen is going to
be a small tube that will carry fluid down into the third ventricle. So I have it highlighted right there. There's our interventricular foramen. And that from that interventricular foramen, we're then going to have fluid, cerebral spinal fluid, in this hollow space that I'm circling in red. This is called the third ventricle. And that third ventricle is right in the smack dab center of the brain, in between the left and right thalami. From the third ventricle, fluid will flow through the cerebral, cerebral spinal fluid will flow through the cerebral aqueduct to the fourth ventricle, and from the fourth ventricle to the central canal. So here in invisible body, let's show that cerebral aqueduct. It is right here. This, let me click it. Oh, come on, go away. Now it'll let me click it. There's that cerebral aqueduct, it's that skinny little tube. And I can expose the third ventricle here, or fourth ventricle. If I look at a posterior view here, we can see we have the cerebral aqueduct connect to the fourth ventricle. And I'll go ahead and highlight the entire fourth ventricle. The fourth ventricle is between the pons and the cerebellum, sandwiched in there. Now, if I click on the pons, I can just dissect it back and better highlight that fourth ventricle for us. So here we can see fully one half of the fourth ventricle from this view. I'm gonna go down here and click on the medulla oblongata, hide the medulla oblongata, and we can see a teeny tiny skinny tube that goes down to the spinal cord. That teeny tiny spinny, skinny tube is the central canal, and it's a bit of a programming error here in visible body. But as we look at the central canal, it should, this structure that I clicked on should line up perfectly with that black dot that is at the tip of my pointer. So there's a little programming error there. Don't let that throw you off. They're both called the central canal. So that's all we have for structures of the brain and we have cranial nerves in a separate video clip. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them in the class discussion board or to shoot me an email. And as always, happy studies.